Now let's pray together. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word is pure and enlightens us to know your will and ways. Now help me now to expound your word faithfully. And may your Holy Spirit illuminate our hearts so that we may know your will and live it out. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, mind reading is a secret power that I have often longed to possess. Uh, my wife Suman is Malaysian, and so in the early days of our relationship, we had some pretty serious communication gaps. Remember on one occasion we went out uh, to lunch with friends and after talking for some time I was ready to, to go home. But as I looked and saw you know, Suman chatting away happily, uh, I thought that she wanted to stay. It turned out that she wanted to go home too and was rather unhappy that I just kept on talking. Mind reading would have done our relationship a lot of good. Well in the same way sometimes we wish that we could read the mind of God, uh, to, to know his plans for our life, to know what is he doing in this world, in all the, the chaos around us. We think what a difference knowing God's will would make to our decision making and as we go through times of suffering. Well, as it turns out, we don't need the superpower of mind reading to know the plan of God because the mystery of God's will is something no longer hidden, but something revealed for all of us to know. Uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 tells us the mystery of God's will. It says, God made known to us the mystery of his will to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. See, God's grand plan for all of eternity is to bring everything together under the rule of King Jesus. And in our passage today, Paul wants us to understand more of that plan and his role in making it known to the world. So point one this morning, the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel. Uh, in verse 2, Paul speaks here of the mystery of the gospel that has now been revealed. It says in verse 2, Assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. Now, to call God's plan a mystery doesn't mean that it cannot be known. See, what is in my pocket is presently a mystery. You might have uh, many guesses as to, to what's there, maybe my handphone or my car keys or, or my wallet, but actually it's a mystery. You, you don't know. It's known only to me. But I could reveal the mystery to you as I tell you that it's actually a box of rectangular pieces of card uh, that all of them have drawn on them either hearts or spades or clubs or diamonds. Can you guess what it is? Well, yes, it's a, it's a pack of playing cards. And, and so with the gospel. Now, to call it a mystery doesn't mean that it, it cannot be known at all. It just means that for a time it was hidden, but now God has made it known. Now, we see that in verse 4. Now, Paul writes, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his, whole, to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So what, is, what Paul is saying is that, that you never would have guessed the gospel uh, just by reading the Old Testament alone. Now, yes, God's plan is promised in the Old Testament, and yes, that plan is all about the gospel and Jesus, but without the coming of Jesus and the preaching of the gospel through the apostles, we never would have been able to make sense of all those Old Testament prophecies and see the gospel clearly. But now, Paul says, this side of Jesus, the mystery of the gospel has now been revealed. Uh, in fact, in verse 6, uh, 
Paul states plainly what that mystery is. Look at verse 6. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. See, before the coming of Christ, only the Jews were the people of God. And, and, and reading the Old Testament alone, we, we never would have put together all the pieces of God's plan that he was actually building a global, multiracial people united together under the rule of Jesus Christ. But that is the, the glorious plan of God that is now revealed in the gospel. And God's plan includes us, no matter who we are, no matter what our racial background or our gender or our age or our social status. His plan is that we, we all may be fellow heirs, fellow members of the kingdom, fellow partakers in God's promise. We would be united under Christ and united in Christ. Put it another way, God's plan is to unite all people under the rule of King Jesus. Jew and Gentile, Indian and Chinese, Iban and Kadazan, Korean and Japanese, yes, Australian and British too. And God's plan is that we will live out the mystery of the gospel right now in the church as we live in unity with one another from various diverse backgrounds and strive together to make disciples of all nations. So we must be very careful of dividing the church or, or of just welcoming people to church who are just like us. The church must always be outward looking, always seeking to bring the gospel to all people, no matter who they are. Because that is God's glorious plan. Now revealed in the gospel, he's making a united people from all nations. That's point one, the mystery of the gospel. Well, in verse 7 to 9, the focus shifts from the mystery of the gospel to the minister of the gospel, the minister of the gospel. Verse 7, Paul writes, Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So Paul recounts how Jesus changed him from being a persecutor of the church to be an apostle to the nations. Paul knew very well he didn't deserve this great place in God's plans. Being able to Proclaim Jesus to the nations was an immeasurable gift of God's grace to Paul. It's worth thinking, is that how we think about Christian ministry? Now, see, we, we too have been saved by God's grace. We don't deserve to be in his kingdom. And we've been saved in order that we may serve Christ and make him known. It's a privilege, you see, to serve as a leader in God's church. It's a privilege for us to be able to speak to others of Jesus, to our friends and family. Uh, I remember in one of my previous churches, there was a wonderful man who came to know Christ. Uh, he was a quadriplegic. Uh, after a car accident, uh, he couldn't move either his arms or his legs. But being saved by God's grace, he longed to serve Jesus in his life. Now, there was very little that he could do in the Sunday service except uh, read the Bible and pray. But every time he did it, he considered it the greatest of honours to do so. He understood it's a blessing to serve Christ. It's an undeserved gift of God. That God doesn't need me or you to advance his gospel, but God in his grace chooses to use sinful people like you and me to advance his plan. And so we should serve Christ, not because we must, but because we can. Because it's such a privilege to do so. The mystery of the gospel, the minister of the gospel, 
Finally, we see the manifold wisdom of the gospel. It's amazing to recognize that the great uh, place that God has given to his church in his great plan. Now look at verse 10. It says that uh, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Now my guess is when we turn up to church, uh, it feels rather ordinary most of the time even perhaps unimportant. But as we gather together, as people from many diverse backgrounds, actually something truly amazing is happening. See, we are proclaiming the manifold wisdom of God to the heavenly beings. Right? We are embodying God's glorious plan of bringing together people from all nations, different races and ages and genders, together as one united people under Jesus Christ. We only have to turn on the news to see how divided our world actually is. But the church is to be the one place where it is different, where we come together as one, despite all the differences that we have. And as we do that, we proclaim the wisdom and the glory of God, not only to the world, but to the heavenly beings as well. We've seen uh, the mystery of the gospel, the minister of the gospel, the manifold wisdom of the gospel. Oh, in conclusion, verse 11, uh, Paul says, This was according to the eternal purpose that he's realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. See, we don't need to, to mind read to know God's will for our life. We don't need any kind of superpower to know what God's plan is. Today, we've seen that the mystery of God's will, which was once hidden, has now been revealed. And that will is not particularly about what job we should take or where should we, we should live or some other decision in life. God's will for our life is that united with brothers and sisters from diverse backgrounds, from different nations, that we together would live under the rule of Christ and give ourselves to proclaiming that gospel to the world. That is God's plan, to unite people from every nation under the rule of King Jesus. So the question is not, how do we know what God's plan is for my life? But will we live out his plan? Will we live in unity with one another, with people different from me? And will we give ourselves together to making Christ known to the world? Well, let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you have revealed your great plan for the world, to unite all things under the rule of King Jesus. We pray that you'd be helping us to live out your plan in our lives. We pray that you'd be helping us to live in unity with our brothers and sisters, though they may be different to us. We pray that you'd help us to strive together to make Christ known to the nations. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.